How pivotal are these midterms? I would say they're pivotal for democracy because, again, remember, this is the first election after January 6th. And January 6th, we saw violence. And remember, just two weeks ago, the Speaker of the House, the third in line to secession, her husband was brutally attacked. And so I think the question is, are we going to see American democracy continue or will this be, will this election be the confirmation that American democracy is on the decline in the United States? So it's a very pivotal election because I think the question is, does democracy hold or are we seeing democracy begin to eventually go away? Do you think that even after tomorrow, the results of these midterms will be accepted? <laughs> Here's how I'll answer that. We haven't even counted the first vote and already we have a record number of lawsuits about this election. More than 110 lawsuits have already been filed and we haven't counted one vote. So I think the answer to your question is, there will be people, depending on what the outcome is, who will not accept tomorrow's election. And if and when they don't accept it, how will they respond? That's the question. How would you describe where America is headed? What word, what word would you use? Unstable. And why hasn't there been a leader who's been able to bridge the divide or bring stability? Because I think, I think the United States has never figured out how to deal with something like this. If we go all the way back to the Civil War, right, there, were, there was a side who literally fought against the country. But when that war ended, there was no prosecution of those who literally fought to destroy the nation. If we go back to Richard Nixon, Richard Nixon was pardoned for his efforts. And so I think this country does not actually know how to deal with the forces that are moving this nation towards autocracy. But, and also I don't think the country is ready to accept that the country is in the throes, in this real battle between autocracy on one hand and democracy on the other. And right now, democracy is losing. And I think there are many people who just don't want to accept that right now. Even though there is a party who has made clear they will not accept that. Remember, you know, January 6th was real. That happened. That took place. And it, it's not clear it cannot, it will not happen again as soon as perhaps this week. What is it? I mean, Donald Trump isn't even on the ballot for these elections tomorrow. What do you think it is about his message that is still resonating with millions of Americans? He speaks to an audience of people who feel like their voice has not been heard. He speaks for them. He speaks to them. He empowers them. And I think that moves people for good or for bad. And he's still a singular, powerful person in this country that can move the needle. Can he win? We saw that he could not. Will his party win tomorrow? Who knows? But nevertheless, he still shows that he's influential, that he will be, a, he will be integral in what happens tomorrow. He will be integral in what happens going forward in terms of who controls that building in 2024. And Donald Trump is going to be a player. He still is. Let's talk about 2024. I mean, looking at what you see now, uh, we're two years out. What does it mean for the, for the next election, the next presidential election? I think, everything is up, I think everything is up in the air for 2024. That's what makes it so unnerving. That's why I say unstable, instability, fragile. I think, that's, I think those are just some of the words that describe what we're seeing play out right now. When you look at what's happening in your country, and the divisions that seem to be getting deeper each and every month and each and every year. What do you think about this country's future? It's scary. It's scary. But you know, the United States has, has been through scary times before. We have seen whole cities burn to the ground, but we've seen no cities rebuilt. 
you know, it's possible America can pull itself back from this because we've seen it happen before. Um, but it's, that doesn't mean that it's no less scary. That doesn't mean that it's no less problematic. I think the difference is what you're seeing right now is you're seeing autocratic tendencies. And they're not describing it in that way. But when you say that I am not going to accept an election, which is the hallmark of democracy, in many ways you're saying I'm not going to accept democracy unless I control those levers of power. And if I don't control those levers of power, then I will respond violently even. That's a scary thing. That's a scary place to be for a nation. Why don't you think the Democrats have been able to uh, speak to more Republicans or, or bring them on side? Do you think the two sides are just so entrenched that they don't want to look the other way? It doesn't bode well for gaining political power for Republicans to work with Democrats. If you look at what, has, what some of the issues that Democrats have grappled with and worked on over these last two years, uh, inflation, infrastructure, lowering prescription drug prices, those are things that everyone cares about. Republican, Democrat, rich, poor, black or white, they all care about those things. And they want to see people working together for solutions to those problems. But what you're seeing is there is a party who refuses, who just refuses to work with the other side because we can't be seen as giving the other side a win because that doesn't work for us. It's a dirty word to say working across the aisle. That used to be seen as a good thing. That used to be seen as something that, that stoked or, or the ears of the electorate. But now, not so much. And I think that's what's making it problematic to govern, to actually get things done. That doesn't move a nation forward. That doesn't help people with their problems. That doesn't help people who are struggling to pay for food, to put gas in their car, to send their kids to school. And so I think right now, what that means is, this is a very dark time for the country because how do you address and deal with problems? How do you get to solutions if you've got people on the other side who refuse to actually reach out a hand and say, let's work together? But at a certain point, the future of the country has to go beyond politics, does it not? I don't think we saw that on January 6th. Look, there was, there was an attempted overthrow of the country on that day because it was the first branch of government. Remember, the Constitution, Article I creates and establishes a Congress. That was attacked on that day. And you have still people who are working in that building just down the street who are saying that didn't happen. That, that's not what happened. They are literally denying and not telling the truth about what happened. So how do you get to a place where you can actually move past that or how do you get to a place where we're going to just focus on the well-being, the health of this country if we won't even accept that, yes, this country was attacked based on a lie? And that's what it was. It was a lie.